When it comes to every form of coffee preparation, grinding is, at least outside of the coffee and water itself, is one of the main components to the quality of that final cup. And it seems only natural for a company that makes espresso machines to want to dabble in grinders. But with the massive rise of brewing in your own kitchen, it seems La Marzocco Home wants more of a piece of that pie, and has once again taken a swing at grinding with the new Pico. And now that it's been out for a few days and many of us have gotten a good look at it, its specs, and of course its price tag, now seems like a good time to share my take on it, why it gives me a strange sense of deja vu, and why I feel like they're sort of phoning it in. And because today's my birthday, and on my birthday I get to do what I want, and what I want to do is rant about this grinder and some odd circumstances around it, so that's what I'm going to do. And the first thing I want to get out of the way is, I don't own the Pico, I've never used it, and this isn't a review. And honestly, I'm sure it functions and works just fine, but it really reminds me of the release of the Swift Mini. And if you don't remember that, it's not really a big surprise. From what I can gather, it appears to have been a bit of a retail failure, as it's no longer for sale on their website, but there is some remnants of its existence if you dig into their other media, though there is no availability in the US. Now personally, I did have the chance to review the Swift Mini back in August of 2020 when it released, and my general takeaway was it felt pretty mediocre for a grind, dose, and tamp solution selling for $2,500. Now the Pico is selling for significantly less at $995, though still expensive, and at that price point its spec sheet really isn't filling me full of excitement. The Pico uses a 39mm conical bursat, its grind is adjusted using a step dial, it has two timed and one manual dose switch, and probably its most premium feature is its 350 watt brushless motor. And the other main features listed aren't what I would consider groundbreaking either. They have an auto-close hopper and portafilter actuated grinding. Now, if you're watching this video, I probably don't have to tell you this, but there is a market full of many grinders with similar, if not better, specs and features, and for less money. In the realm of conical burrs and hoppers, the Barazza Sette does a lot of what the Pico does for $400. The Malconig X54 and Ranchilio Stile both do the same things but with flat burrs for $600 and $650 respectively, and both have a much broader history with grinding anyway. And you can even get an extremely accurate grime by weight flat burr option, the one that I use in my kitchen personally, the Eureka Mignon Libra, for $800. So when it comes to the Pico, I think my main question is, where is the value for money? Where does that $1,000 price point come from? And I can't help but feel that La Marzocco is, at best, completely out of touch with the broader market and trends, and at worst, is heavily leaning on their name, their brand recognition, and their history to sell this grinder. Of course, this complaint isn't new in coffee circles, and as a former Linea Mini owner and current GS3 owner, I've heard it all. But the main pushback I get from folks on La Marzocco's is they're overpriced, especially considering what's on the market with similar or even more functionality. And I will say that's a very valid argument to make. And actually, I agree with that to a certain extent. In fact, this is a direct quote from my GS3 review. With many other machines on the market with the same or similar control and features, deciding if it's worth $7,900 isn't a choice based in reason. Instead, it's based on owning a piece of espresso history, a piece of La Marzocco's legacy, a machine that stands out in a market dominated by E61s, and of course, maybe a little bit of clout. And I 100% stand by that statement, and it seems like a topic that comes up quite a bit. I mean, the feel and the overall style of Elon's machines really do ooze historic charisma, and there is an unspoken value to that. But with the Pico, that same charm to me just isn't there. Now, I wouldn't say it's unattractive, I don't generally mind the design, but like the Swift Mini, it feels different, like a step away from the La Marzocco aesthetic. I mean, outside of the addition of a dated screen and switches. It's a little sharper, a little more industrial, a little more, dare I say, German? Or, I guess, German speaking at least. The Swift Mini, for instance, bears at the very least a general resemblance to the new Pico. And considering the Swift was confirmed to be produced by the Liechtenstein based grinder manufacturer Etzinger, I mean, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck. So, the statement on their website saying it was designed and built by La Marzocco, I'll be taking that with a grain of salt. 
And yes, this is full and total speculation here, but it seems to me it's more of a collaboration, or at the very least, Lomarzoko had a rummage around Etzinger's parts department, from the look of the body shape and angles, to the adjustment dial and hopper. And honestly, if that's the case, that's fine, I really have no issues with collaboration. I mean, Lamarzoko has been selling rebranded Mazers under their umbrella for quite some time. The Lux D, for instance, is purely a push-to-grind modified Mazer Mini, and just so happens to have been my first espresso grinder. But my point here is, if the Pico is truly a Lamarzoko design from the ground up, who signed off on all these things? What committee signed off on that design and those specifications? Because it feels like a far cry from their traditional La Marzocco design language, any sort of market trends, and way too similar to the poorly received Swift Mini. Anyway, as I start to wind this one down, I think that I need to reiterate that I love La Marzocco as a brand. I mean, I'm here wearing this shirt to prove it. but. I also don't want to belittle or minimize the efforts of anyone who built or maybe even designed or put effort into this grinder in any way. That's really not my intention here, but I do think some tough love is in order, even though I think that's a pretty toxic term. But I do think it's important to be critical, I guess I should say, um, in situations where I feel like it's warranted. And from the outside looking in, it feels like they are really just cashing in on the name, the brand recognition, and the history, and not really innovating or producing something that feels like a La Marzocco, at least in terms of grinders. I mean, no matter how you felt about the Micra or Micra, and yes, it wasn't particularly innovative, but at least it felt like a true La Marzocco product, from form to function. But the Pico, at least in terms of form and its overall specs, it comes across like another Swift Mini, a small conical burr grinder paired with a big price tag. And when compared to what's already on the market with similar features, performance, and in a lot of cases, broader interest with things like flat burrs or single dose designs, I just don't see the appeal of the Pico beyond being able to say it's a La Marzocco. And if it truly has been in development for near a decade, it really feels like the entire grinder market evolved around it and not with it. And on that bombshell, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Pico? Do you think it's a good value for money and it's a good addition to the La Marzocco lineup? I mean, all of this is just one man's opinion. And if you go onto Instagram and you scroll through the comments, you have to go through quite a few fire emojis until you reach the ones that are being a little more critical. So the thoughts and feelings are out there and I wanna know what the coffee community at large has to say or thinks about this grinder. So drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spromethius, for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for exclusive access. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.